Okay, back again. And we want to stick on this topic of uh, commercial loans, um, use using commercial loans for expansion. And I was thinking, uh, I'm sure you've seen all kinds of different things with people trying to expand their businesses yeah. and coming to you for loans for who knows what. Um, with their ideas of how <laughs> commercial loans or, you know, loans should yeah. be used. And there's lots of loans out there um, to probably achieve all those, those, those avenues. But it got me thinking what you've seen maybe is the most, the most creative way that you've seen someone try to use a commercial loan for expansion. Yeah. And it's a combination of being creative and simple. You know, you got to understand what banks, you know, what their ideal collateral is. The ideal collateral is real estate and commercial buildings. When you're looking at commercial loans, having that tangible asset that holds the most value for the longest time during recessions and up knowing that, but the things that may make the biggest difference to your business may be new equipment, um, greater inventory. So then you get into, okay, inventory financing, equipment financing. Those are going to be much higher rates because, you know, there's a smaller market of people that are interested in your inventory, your marketability of that. And so those are going to be higher rates and shorter terms. So the best way is to put yourself in a position ahead of time by having as much equity in assets that banks like. And that would typically be the commercial real estate. So having as much room in there, paying it down as much as possible, you know, so if you've got just a million dollar commercial property mm -hmm. stagnant, the bank knows that another tenant come in and easily rent that out for net hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. We've got stability in that property. Well, if you only owe half a million dollars on that and you need to buy equipment for a hundred thousand, instead of getting a 10, 12% equipment financing, you know, okay. Now you can get a second on your commercial building, mm -hmm. much better rate. But the key is too, even though you're leveraging a long-term asset to where you can get a 20 year amortization on that, know that, okay, you're using that to finance your equipment that may have a five-year lifespan. Right. Pay it off in that five years. Right. Still Keep use it. it use way. it. And, yeah. you know, because there is a price point. I mean, you're selling it. Maybe it's, um, maybe you've got, you know, 11 gauge steel that you're using your product. Mm -hmm. And you know that if you're buying X amount of tons, mm -hmm. you get a, you know, Volume. a 20% discount. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's huge. Maybe at that time, then it's only costing you 6% on that, you know, line of credit that you're using your commercial real estate. So mm -hmm. utilizing your assets that the banks like to leverage the things that um, create the most value in your business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and what that brings to mind is, is this idea of like having a conversation with your local banker. So if, if you're, if you're being strategic about how you're growing and you're thinking, you know, okay, I need some support here financially maybe coming in and talking to a banker and saying, okay, this is what my, you know, I'm manufacturing yeah. these products. Um, and it's not clear to me how I can move forward to expand with, with your help. They can insert these ideas. They can say, Absolutely. Well, okay, well, we've seen this, you know, 500 And you times. know, and this may be more for the established business. Mm -hmm. Now when we're getting into the, th you know, where, um, I forget what percentage of people, you know, work from home. So now you've got software as a service. Yeah, you've a got lot. a lot of software companies out there that don't have that office place that is maybe they got an office, but they've got an 800 square foot office with three employees and the remaining hundred across the nation. Yeah. So in that case, you know, they need funds, a lot of that, they're going to have to, you know, fund up front or they're going to have to have, um, you know, a lender that understands software as a service and look at sure. inventory financing for that. And it's going to be higher cost, mm -hmm. but then that's what they're going to need. But the better the cost is, you're going to be longer established. You've got a track record and you're utilizing. So, you know, the companies out there that are doing that type of financing, they're also going to want to see certain types of APIs that are used so they can track it better. Yeah. So maybe find out ahead of time what integrations. Yeah. 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 So as a business owner, they should be thinking about, um, you know, the, the highest valued collateral, right? Because mm -hmm. as you're saying, real estate being the, the highest for the cheapest rate. Yes. Right. Um, 
and and kind of thinking through those things before they have that conversation with the with their bank. Is yeah. that is that right? Yeah, uh, dead on. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like it. Uh, any any anything else you want to add to that conversation? I mean, I I, I kind of want to keep this positive instead of yeah. go you know negative into what's the worst situation. You you've know, seen, I still but you know, know lending is a thing, but you know, I, I see so many times where you know businesses still think that loan is going to save them, and it's really not the case. It right. is um, just being more efficient and really, you know, taking, you know, not spending money in the beginning to set yourself up. Mm-hmm. You know, if your business has to get a loan to survive, it's not going to survive anyways. Yep. You know, so don't Agreed. fall on that. It's not the end of the world, um, you know, but don't go out there and just borrow, borrow, borrow. Yeah. From the marketing side, as there's a parallel there where, you know, you don't necessarily want to spend a bunch of money on uh, something that doesn't scale. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to find where it, the scale point and then put money behind it. Um, and I, it, I think that plays in the, just the general business strategy as well. You know, if you have to get a loan to boost you off the ground um, and you haven't done this before, then it's probably not going to go yeah. well. But if you found something that is working and there's demand, then putting money money behind is going to be a better better risk. Yeah, and there is a silver lining to higher rates. You know, we've gone through a long time of such low rates that um, I believe businesses and individuals they weren't saving any money because they're right. like, "Why well, would I save? Mm-hmm. You know, I can borrow one percent, two percent, three percent. I just leverage, leverage, leverage." Mm-hmm. But you know, that is a horrible way to live in the long run you that does not create sustainability and the one benefit of you know having a mortgage or a commercial that is larger rate just think every extra dollar you pay to principal how much you're saving over time and you know when rates are higher typically costs are built into it too so you know even though it's a higher rate people that are efficient and that save it is going to reward the hard workers that's right. You know, in this economy. Yeah, so that, that makes sense too. And the longer rates are low, I it mean, sort of becomes a mentality and there's less discipline. Yeah. I mean, really the rates never should have been a target rate is zero percent. It mm-hmm. did not incentivize the right um, habits at all. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that set us up to just have a, you know, fall off and a cliff. Yep. So, you know, I, I'm, I think they wrote, raised rates too high, too fast, but, you know, we can all, you know, live with that. And there is going to be incentive for the quality companies, the people that are, you know, have hard work out there and that aren't over leveraged. They will be able to survive and thrive. Yeah, it's definitely a nod to discipline in your business and, and knowing your business and um, staying true to um, good what good cash flow looks like um, and, and planning. You know, that's sort of what comes up on my mind, too, when we're talking about this is how do you do – Um, how do you get to this place where you can make good strategic decisions? A lot of it comes in planning and being intentional about where you're headed. I mean, uh, to go on personal side, I mean, um, we just had uh, expenditures at our house, but I could have gone out and bought a house three times the value of our house Mm -hmm. would qualify. But then when maintenance comes up, you still got maintenance. No, uh, you you know, you still got to take care of that. And I don't know about you, you know, Buying a house, how long does a nice house last? I mean, stuff falls apart in five years. Mm-hmm. So if you, you know, over leverage yourself and get the most expensive house that you can't afford, it's only been nice for a few years and, mm-hmm. you know, you're not going to be able to maintain it. It's become so, almost like cars where, you you know, you pay so much money and then it, it loses value within the first five years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know whether a house was built in the nineties, eighties, seventies, sixties, if it hadn't changed, they're all outdated. Yeah. So, that's right. you know, yeah. do not over leverage, do not buy the house that, you know, you're maxing out, mm-hmm. you know, you still got to maintain a lifestyle. Yeah. I think that's, what's difficult for business owners is you get in this mentality of um, low interest loans and uh, using them for leveraging to, for growth. And, mm-hmm. and you have, then you have growth. And it, all the th- all the good things that come with that, more profit. You know, you have a bigger team, you have a bigger business, and it's hard to come off of that. Then you get stuck at this place where you really should shouldn't have grown yeah. so fast 
you know, so quickly, um, so big, so quickly. I mean, just think about it. If you have a 10% loan, that, that's horrible. But if you paid a thousand dollars to principal that year, you know, that immediately saves you a hundred dollars that first year by putting that mm-hmm. on the principal. So you're so much more incentivized is paying more and more off that loan. Mm-hmm. So at least, you know, and then that is creating savings. That is creating savings. So there's ways, there's, there's lots of ways to be creative. Um, but it, I think it takes a, a disciplined owner, someone who's in, about planning, thinking about, you know, where they're going and not trying to grow too fast. Um, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, oh, yeah. but yeah. I mean, I think to be strategic about how you're growing, um, and not just for growth's sake. I mean, personally, I would like to see the companies go to the wayside that are just, you know, they're scaling, thinking they're going to catch up once they hit users of 10 million mm-hmm. or, you know, sales yeah. of 1 million. I agree. Whether it's for, um, I mean, we've used the, um, you know, the, the kits that um, cook at home where they send you a box of everything. That yeah, you, subscription, that you cook, yeah, subscriptions. So many of the subscription models, I mean, weren't profitable again. They, they yeah. had to hit so much of a category and then they wanted to resell data and everything. Yeah. Then they're in a different business. <laughs> yeah. So... You know, I think we're going to see the cream of the crop, just like the dot com. Yeah. Well, which ones that actually make sense are sustainable. So I'm, I'm kind of part of me is looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, that's good.